Manjaro, a distribution whose name I can't seem to pronounce correctly no matter how hard I try, has released yet another new version. And Manjaro is a rolling release, so I mean you could argue they're always releasing a new version because you constantly get updates for all of your installed software. That's what a rolling release actually is. But they put out a new release every now and then in the form of a snapshot, so they still have version numbers. And Manjaro 20 was recently released. So what I decided to do in this video was to check out the GNOME and the XFCE editions of this new release. Now, there's not a lot different in the new release, but I figured it'd be fun to go ahead and check them out anyway. So let's go ahead and get right into my review of Manjaro 20. So first of all, here I am with the GNOME edition. As you can see right here, this has not been customized. I wanted to show you guys the vanilla look and feel so that you can have a better idea what to expect if you were to go ahead and install this. So real quick, I just want to mention that this was installed on a ThinkPad T480 S, which has 24 gigs of RAM, an i7 processor, and an SSD. So this machine is definitely no slouch. And this is not a virtual machine. I don't use virtual machines on my channel unless I tell you guys first. So what you're seeing here is a Manjaro install directly on the hardware itself. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, not a lot has changed since the previous release. In the previous review, I had a lot to talk about because it's been a long time since the last time that I reviewed Manjaro before that. And this is more of an incremental change. So I think that this is going to go a little bit faster than that, but real quick, we have the default look and feel here, which has a panel here on the left. Now, if you've used other GNOME distributions, then you know that that's actually not something that you get by default. That's something that the Manjaro developers add as an extension to give you guys a panel. You can install that panel, this one right here, on any GNOME distribution, but it's here by default. Now, in my case, I prefer more of a vanilla GNOME look and feel without any extensions at all. But thankfully, that's actually pretty easy to accomplish because we have the Layouts Manager, which I'm going to go ahead and show you right now. And in fact, it's part of this welcome screen. Right here, we have GNOME Layouts Manager that gives us quick access to that. So if I click on it, we can see that we have some default options here as far as what type of layout we would like for our UI. And right now it's defaulting to this one, Manjaro, which is showing a screenshot that has a panel here on the left, just like you see here. So that's the one that we're on by default. We can even do something like this by activating Unity mode. Go ahead and apply that. If you're a fan of the old Unity desktop from Ubuntu, then you have a layout that is more akin to that. The panel now takes up the majority of the left-hand side of the screen, and we have our menu right here, which gives us a nifty little applications menu. Now, as for me, I actually prefer the vanilla GNOME layout, which does not have this panel here on the left. And I don't like extensions either for the most part, so I like to have a fairly clean and vanilla GNOME experience. We also have the Unity layout as well. So if you prefer the old Unity layout from Ubuntu before they switch to GNOME, you can replicate that fairly closely here. It makes the panel take up the majority of the left-hand side of the screen and gives us an applications menu right here that is sure to be useful for those of you that prefer that. And I really like this layouts manager. I think it's one of the things that sets GNOME or the GNOME edition of Manjaro apart from, you know, Fedora, and Ubuntu, I mean, you get some of these options in those distributions, but you don't get anything like a layouts manager that truly gives you a lot more customization as far as the look and feel. I love it. I think it's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the default for the remainder of the review. And here we are. In addition to that, we also get some other settings as well. If I go here, we could basically enable dynamic wallpaper. 
And if I click open, I have a little utility here that I can use to create my own dynamic wallpaper, which is pretty cool. You can also open the GNOME Tweak Tool directly from this menu. And the GNOME Tweak Tool is something that I, to be honest with you guys, I kind of wish it didn't exist because what necessarily constitutes a tweak versus a setting? I mean, we have GNOME Settings, for example, which is generally where you go to customize your GNOME desktop, you know, your Wi-Fi, and sound settings, power settings, display settings, all those types of things, which is great. But then we have this app right here, which is the GNOME Tweak Tool, which I honestly wish would just go away forever because it's confusing sometimes to try to figure out where a setting might be. Is it in GNOME Settings? Is it in the Tweak Tool? This has nothing to do with Manjaro. This is a GNOME thing. This is true of all GNOME distributions. It suffers the same thing. But thankfully, at the very least, we actually have the ability to get to the GNOME Tweak Tool from here, which is just going to make it that much easier to get to if you do need that. We can open the online accounts option and we have some settings here as far as any of these online accounts we might want to sign into. We can enable the system tray or disable it. It's enabled by default. That's it right here. So I'm going to leave that enabled. We can have the automatic dark theme apply which is pretty cool as well. We can turn on desktop icons and that's awesome. Now we have desktop icons couldn't be easier. That's probably a GNOME extension. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and check that out if I start typing extensions. This is actually one of the new features here in Manjaro 20, and this isn't specific to Manjaro. This is a, basically a GNOME 3.36 feature where you have a utility that you can use to install, update, manage your extensions, which is pretty awesome. You don't have to open the tweak tool for this reason anymore. Honestly, I don't know why GNOME didn't just put this in GNOME settings to streamline it, but you know, that's a rant for another day. But I think it's great because we at least have this. So we can go through and see what extensions are enabled here. So we have a game mode extension, that's pretty cool. And we have quite a few of these installed by default. Most of them are actually disabled. But it's cool that we do have some here. If we want to benefit from any of these, we can go ahead and turn them on. So you can get an idea as far as what extensions come with the GNOME edition of Manjaro. Now one thing I definitely want to do is take a look at performance. So what I'm going to do is open up the system monitor. And with no applications running, what kind of resources are we using here? So we're using 1.3, 1.2, basically just a little north of a gigabyte in memory. And this is idle. I don't even have Firefox open, for example. The CPU usage is very low, as you can see here. So I don't think this is unreasonable. I have about 24 gigs of RAM. Just one gig for the OS is not unreasonable. Now, if you have an older machine, you know, maybe all you have is four gigs of RAM or something like that, then this would probably be something that would uh, not be great for you. But for most modern computers, I think one gig of RAM for the interface is probably fine. You can always use a different version of Manjaro that uses a different desktop environment or even go with a window manager if you really want to save memory. The options are yours and Manjaro does, well, they have different versions and they also have ways that you can install packages to get different window managers and things like that. So you can really squeeze the performance out of your machine if that's something that concerns you. And just like before, if I open up the file manager here, now they've gone above and beyond when it comes to the look and feel by theming pretty much all of the desktop. The icon theme, window border, you know, the GTK theme. I mean, they've pretty much thought of everything. So I think it's awesome that they give you guys a really good looking GNOME experience out of the box because let's be honest, the default GNOME theme, it's kind of a little bland to be honest. So I guess I feel like they're breathing life into GNOME where there really isn't life to begin with. GNOME is my favorite desktop environment, but I'm definitely not going to accuse it of being the most gorgeous desktop environment out of the box. I don't think very many people would accuse it of being that. So I think that it is the missing link to give it this layer, and I think they've done a great job with that. So, you know what? This is the GNOME edition. You're going to benefit from all of the features that come with GNOME 3.36.
because that's the latest version, this is a rolling release, so obviously you're going to get the latest GNOME experience, which is great. But what I also want to do in this video is show you guys the XFCE edition as well. So I'll go ahead and be right back and then I'll show it off. Okay, so here I am with the XFCE edition and I haven't installed it yet because I wanted to show you guys what the installation process actually looks like. So what I'm going to do right now is blow away the GNOME edition that I just installed and go ahead and install this, the XFCE edition. So right here from the Manjaro Hello menu right here, we have the launch installer. So I'll go ahead and click that. And let's get rid of that window. Now, of course, it's complaining that the system isn't plugged in. I don't really care. The battery is going to more than last for the installation. So basically not much has changed here. So I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly, but there is something that I did want to note a little bit of a frustration that I've experienced. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Just leave the default language right there where it is. And it's already detected my location near Detroit, which is true. That's pretty cool. Now here's where I ran into a little bit of a problem. Actually, I don't want to call it a problem, more of an annoyance. So what I wanted to do was try out LVM for a completely different selfish reason. I just wanted to, you know, run an LVM experiment, if you will. So off camera, what I did is I tried to go here to manual partitioning because we don't have an LVM option right here. So I'll, I'll click next. And what I want to do is go ahead and blow away everything. So I'll just delete these. And we basically have the entire hard drive free. Now what I want to do is go ahead and click here to free space. I'm going to click create. And I'm going to set this to be a physical volume for LVM. And then I'll click OK. And so far so good. So now what I want to do is create a new volume group. I'm going to use the new physical volume that I just created. I'll call mine VG Manjaro or something like that. That's fine. Click OK. So, so far so good. It, it looks like it's an awesome thing that LVM is built into the installer and I can configure it, except I can't. So I'll go up here. I'll choose the new volume group that I just created. I get no options. None. There's, there's no way to create a logical volume at all. Now, I did some Googling off camera to find out, okay, what's the deal with that? And what the forum post that I read, and actually there's a couple of others, what they mentioned is that you should use the Manjaro Architect, which is this right here. You know, there's some truth to that because, you know, that's actually what that's for. That's for creating a very custom installation of Manjaro. So that's fine. But then why do we get an option to configure LVM halfway in the GUI installer if you can't actually install the distribution on LVM through the installer. They should just take that option away, right? I don't get it. It's a little weird. I have no problem going with the architect to go ahead and set that up. I just find it a little frustrating that they give you the option to set up LVM inside the installer, but they don't give you any possible way of finishing that process. That's a little frustrating. So basically what I'm going to do, choose my storage device here. I'm just going to erase the disk and just go ahead and install it fresh. I'm not going to use swap right now. I'll just leave that alone. I'll put in my name and the name of the computer, which if you didn't already know, I name all my machines after Final Fantasy VI Espers. If you're curious where that came from and my password, and I'll just use the same password for the admin account as it says here, which is going to be sudo, so that's fine. I get a choice of office suite, which this isn't new. I've gone over this in a previous video, so I'm just going to choose LibreOffice for now. Keyboard, I'll leave that as the default. And you know what? Nothing has really changed here all that much because it's the same old installer. It works fine other than the one thing I griped about earlier in regards to LVM. But you know what? It's easy enough to get an installation going with this installer. So I think other than that, it's totally fine. And it actually happens reasonably quick as well. As you can see, as I'm talking, we've already gone up to 21%. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish and then I'll be right back.
All right, so the installation is finished, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart, and I'll be right back. All right, so here we are with the XFCE edition of Manjaro. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and, well, check out the performance. If you remember earlier in the video, we looked at the system monitor in GNOME. It was using 1.2 gigabytes or so of RAM with no applications open. So let's see how the XFCE edition stacks up. And as you can see here, it's actually using less RAM than the GNOME edition, just under about 800 megabytes of RAM or so. So it's not astronomically different. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 megabytes different, which is not gonna make that big of a difference if you have a modern system but if you are using something older, then, well, that's probably going to let you stretch the install a little bit further. So just keep that in mind when you are considering the two versions that you take into consideration how much RAM it uses. Whether or not that matters to you depends solely on what kind of hardware you have. So anyway, let's take a look around the release. And similar to earlier in the GNOME section, I'm bringing up the file manager here. And the theme is pretty much identical. I mean, of course, it's going to look a little bit different because XFCE is a different desktop environment after all. But we get the same colorization and whatnot. And it looks like the same icon theme to me, which I think looks a lot like Pop! OS and their icon theme. Maybe they get it from the same source or something like that. Either way, I like it. In fact, green is my favorite color. So selfishly, I actually like this better than the Pop! OS theme, to be honest. But I don't think you can go wrong here because I think that they have put in the same level of polish and attention to detail in the XFCE edition just as they've done with the GNOME edition. Now another new feature that I think is pretty awesome here, if you go to the display settings, and then go to advanced, you can actually create different profiles for your displays. I think this is awesome, especially if you have a laptop Maybe you have a set of monitors at the office or a docking station or something like that, and you have a different display somewhere else in the house or maybe a different office or you move around a lot. It's pretty cool to have different displays that you can set up or display profiles depending on where you are and what you're connecting your computer to. You could automatically configure displays when connected Basically something you could already do, but everything is exposed here in its own interface. I think that's awesome, and that's something that you can definitely take advantage of if you're on a laptop. Now in my case, that's not something I could show you very easily because a screen recorder only records off of one screen anyway. But if that's you, if you are the type of person where you have multiple desks or multiple displays, and you can benefit from profiles, let me know in the comments below what your use case is, and if you've had a chance to check this out, tell me what you think about it. Now, when it comes to the XFCE edition, we get the latest version of XFCE here. It's bleeding edge. We get version 4.14 in this latest release. And yes, this is a rolling release, so you'll always have the latest, but version 20 represents a snapshot of their rolling distribution. And when you install it, you're going to get version 4.14. If you are already running Manjaro and you're running the XFCE edition and you run your updates, then you are also running on version 4.14 by nature of it being a rolling release. But I think that it's great that this snapshot has a modern version of XFCE installed by default. Now, by default here, we get our applications menu here on the left pretty much the same as before. And the XFCE edition overall gives you a classic desktop experience. It uses fewer system resources, so it's good for older machines and even newer ones. Even if you have one of those fancy Ryzen processors, it'll allow you to squeeze even more performance out of it, which is always pretty cool. So overall, between the XFCE edition and the GNOME edition of Manjaro 20, there's nothing here that's amazing when it comes to standout features. There's smaller improvements all over the place, but I think what it equals is a great experience regardless of 
which of these two desktop environments you choose to go along with, or if you even go along with any of the other offerings that they also give you the benefit of being able to download. I think that you can't go wrong with Manjaro if you're looking for a rolling release distribution. So far, it's just been great. So there you go. That was my review of Manjaro 20. You know, the more I use this distribution, the more I love it. It's a rolling release, but it's approachable by beginners. And even if you're an advanced user, there's still something here for you because you get a lot of customization options. You even get the Manjaro Architect if you really want to go crazy with customization. I mean, I love Arch, but there's something to be said about an installer that's just easy to go and get you up and running quickly. And that's what Manjaro allows you to do. You get the benefits of a rolling release, but you don't get all of the complexities. Now, of course, it's still going to be a little bit more advanced than something like Ubuntu or Fedora, but not so much so that I think it's off-putting. And Manjaro 20 is yet another great release. There's no major new features here, but incremental features are also great. And I think the GNOME edition and the XFCE edition, the two that I've had a chance to try, they definitely deliver. So if you are looking for a rolling release distribution and you want something that is easy to set up, I highly recommend you check out Manjaro. They continue to deliver, and I think it's an awesome distribution. So what do you think of Manjaro 20 or any other version of Manjaro? that even the ones that I didn't cover, like the KDE edition, let me know in the comments below what you think of Manjaro 20, and I'll see you in the next video.